My name is Denton Callender, and I am a HIV and sexual health researcher with the University of New South Wales. Uh, earlier in March this year, uh, I presented on behalf of my colleagues uh, at the virtual CROI conference, um, which is normally held in Boston, but was conducted online this year. And I shared with participants an analysis that my colleagues and I have been working on, um, really representing a project that's been running for a number of years now, that aim to investigate HIV treatment as prevention and its effects on um, HIV incidence. We've known, of course, for a number of years now that HIV treatment is really great for individual health and also um, between individuals, it's quite an effective prevention tool. So if you're on treatment, you're not going to pass on the virus. What's less clear is if that strategy, treatment as prevention, can achieve big picture effects in terms of population health. So put it simply, if we get enough people on treatment, can we see a reduction in new cases of HIV? And a few different studies have looked at this over the past couple of years um, with inconclusive or conflicting results. And so um, looking specifically at gay and bisexual men in Australia, uh, my colleagues and I sought to conduct an analysis looking at that population specifically. And to do this, we used um, routinely extracted uh, health data. So data from clinics, hospitals, sexual health clinics, drug and alcohol services, basically any sites that we identified as conducting a lot of testing, diagnosis, management, or treatment around HIV. And we use a process of anonymous linkage between different sites to effectively create a longitudinal cohort of you know, over 60,000 gay and bisexual men. So really a large data set um, that allowed us to calculate a few different kinds of measures. And the first of these was HIV incidents, our primary outcome. So you know, the number of incident infections over the time of follow-up. And we were curious how HIV incidents related to community viremia. So the proportion of people with HIV who are viremic, which is to say they have a greater likelihood of passing on the virus. And to do this, we used um, not only the routine clinical data that I've already described, but also mathematical modeling to estimate the, the number of gay and bisexual men who had HIV but didn't know it. So a more accurate, true estimate of community viremia that encompasses both diagnosed and undiagnosed infections. And when we calculated these two things and we looked at them together, we found a really uh, strong and compelling association over time between these two measures. And it's really important to note that, um, you know, not only did community viremia drop from 2012 to 2017, but so did HIV incidence. And we observed that a strong relationship in that decline before the introduction of PrEP in 2015. So even for a shorter time period, before PrEP was, you know, before people even knew what PrEP was, um, treatment as prevention appeared to be having an effect on HIV incidence. So, you know, from my perspective, this is really exciting and, and cool. It suggests that not only is treatment for HIV an excellent individual health strategy, but it can have major public health benefits as well. And, you know, Australia and the health organizations there spent a lot of time, energy, and money uh, investing in HIV treatment, getting people on treatment, and it appears to be paying off in a public health sense. This also really strongly uh, reinforces for me the need for HIV treatment to be accessible to all people. So, not everyone is on treatment in Australia, and certainly not everyone's on treatment around the world. So again, thinking about those individual benefits, but also thinking about the potential public health benefits, which our analysis really strongly supports. So this work is one piece among many, many other more complex uh, kinds of looks that we'll be taking over the next few months, including trying to unpack how individual risk or individual practices fit into this whole equation of treatment as prevention among gay and bisexual men. But at the very least, it does seem like uh, decreases in community viremia driven by increases in HIV treatment can decrease HIV incidence among gay and bisexual men, which is really cool and I think really exciting. Thanks. <laughs>